News of the Times, Murder at Java Junction. Welcome to News of the Times, our mini murder mystery. An armchair mystery and just a spot of fun for crime detective enthusiasts and an opportunity to channel your inner Sherlock. It was spring and the onset of roadworks, that annual event that was always guaranteed to add 30 minutes travel time to anywhere within the city. Chief Inspector Wayne never did quite understand how a road could be dug up, important looking machinery would be at play for a week or so, then the road would then be tarmacked over only to be dug up again a week or so later by a different set of workmen. He sighed. On a positive, this encouraged him to walk, as attempting to drive the car through the city with the various closed roads and diversions was a near impossibility. A call came in of a body found on the pavement outside of the Java Junction coffee shop. It had only just turned nine o'clock, and he had not yet had his second cup of morning coffee. Upon walking into town to avoid the traffic chaos, he could see where the area had been blocked off by the policeman already there. On the pavement lay a Robert Brown, an investment banker, with a paper in one hand and a cup of now spilled coffee in another. Oddly, beside the dead body lying on the pavement, he could see what looked like little bits of green flakes glinting in the morning sun from the spilled coffee. The case, it would seem, would take on further importance, as Mr. Brown was also a city council member. The coroner, assessing the body, the dilated pupils and foam at the mouth, surmised that Mr. Brown had died by some kind of drug or poisonous substance. He would not know more until a post-mortem took place. Around Mr. Brown's mouth, Chief Inspector Wayne could see residue that looked similar to the crushed green flakes of the spilled coffee. What was that? Don't know, was the gruff reply from the coroner, and I won't know until we analyse it. Some of the green flakes on the pavement were also scooped up into little bags, for later analysis. Chief Inspector Wayne sighed again. He did not seem that he would have any answers any time soon, and with Mr. Brown being a councilman, pressure was on to solve the case quickly. The police had gathered the witnesses, and Chief Inspector Wayne started the process of taking statements. Suspect 1. The Barista Jake Gordon. Jake Gordon, who according to his t-shirt was a fully-fledged barista, was first to be interviewed. With the coffee shop itself now locked down as police scoured through it, the interviews had to be held outside inconveniently. Jake explained how Mr. Brown was a regular, always with the same order of a ristretto with almond milk and a splash of vanilla syrup. He informed Chief Inspector Wayne that today's coffees were all special, as it was St. Patrick's Day. All of the coffees made received a liberal sprinkling of green flakes. Chief Inspector Wayne quietly wondered to himself, when did coffee become so complicated? Jake Seeing some of the remaining green flakes on the pavement from the spilled coffee looked surprised. The green flakes he put into the coffees did not look like the green flakes he could see. His green flakes were powdery. The green flakes from the spilled coffee were larger and a brighter green. Mr. Brown, he said, tended to be an abrupt and an exacting man. He was particular that this coffee was made a certain way. Jake 
though Mr. Brown had seemed a bit anxious this morning, Jake had made the coffee, but as people had entered the shop, he had seemed startled and had gone to the bathroom. Jake had left his coffee to the side with his name on it for him to collect when he came back. He had been busy with orders and stocking the shelves with an array of green iced treats, and had not noticed anything until he had seen Mr. Brown collapse outside. Jotting everything down, Chief Inspector Wayne thanked him and asked him to step aside. The shop was still locked as police swept through it, looking for anything suspicious and now taking samples from within the shop of the mysterious green powder that had been put into coffee cups. Sporadic bursts of drilling in the road were now taking place. What seemed like waves of pedestrians came streaming across the road regularly, with the very loud beeping noise telling pedestrians to cross the road happening almost every five minutes. Clearly, Chief Inspector Wayne was not the only person to decide to walk into town to avoid the roadworks. Suspect 2. Mother, Maisie Miller Maisie reported that she had dropped off the kids at school and had gone to the coffee shop for a treat before her Pilates class. Like others, she had walked in to avoid the very awful roadworks. Just as she said this, the hammering started up, and she shouted over the noise that she had a Pilates session that was starting up in 20 minutes. She shouted that she actually knew Mr. Brown as he worked at the local bank. The drilling stopped, making conversation possible once again. Yes, she knew Mr. Brown as she and her husband had spoken with him regarding long-term investment planning. They only knew him casually through the bank. They had a second appointment with him to come in the following week. He'd seemed a nice enough guy to her, although her husband was less impressed, he, and he was looking to cancel next week's appointment. Chief Inspector Wayne asked to look at her coffee. It did indeed have green-coloured foam on top from a green powdery substance. Maisie had been gulping her coffee before her Pilates session to come and felt fine. Suspect 3. Retired Rose Gardiner Rose explained quickly before Chief Inspector Wayne could begin that she was deaf, but with a twinkle in her eye she said not to worry as she was an expert at reading lips. Rose confirmed that she had been a florist and laughed as Chief Inspector Wayne raised an eyebrow. Yes, Rose Gardiner was her real name, she said, and her being a florist had just been coincidental. Retired, but finding it hard to make ends meet, she regularly took a walk in this area of town every morning, looking for any possible job opportunities in the shop windows. She had not really noticed Mr. Brown in the shop as she was checking her phone to see if any emails had come in regarding jobs. She moved to one side to get out of the way of the influx of pedestrians scurrying across the road as the pedestrian walk signal sounded and spoke a bit louder to explain that she had popped into the coffee shop to see if they might have any jobs going, although she was older. She affirmed she was still able to work. Going back to the topic of Mr. Brown, she confirmed she did not know him, poor man, but like the others, she had seen him drop to the ground outside whilst having a drink of coffee. Chief Inspector Wayne noted that she did not have a coffee. No, she replied, expensive coffees were now not an option. She had only come in looking for work. Suspect 4. IT shop owner Barry James Barry had come in as he always did to get a double shot coffee to go for his first round of morning caffeine. 
Once again, the interview was temporarily stopped as another wave of pedestrians came flooding in with the warning beep beep of the pedestrian lights reverberating. Yes, he knew Mr. Brown as Mr. Brown had approved his loan for his small IT shop that he had opened a few weeks ago just down the street. He did not know Mr. Brown socially, but he had voted for him as a councilman. As the drilling of the road started up again, Barry expressed his upset and disgust. With the road closure, his small IT business was currently not getting any customer footfall and he was having difficulty making the payments. He went on to say that if he had known about the impending roadworks, he would not have voted for Mr. Brown. Chief Inspector Wayne did not think Jake needed any more coffee. He seemed wired and angry the moment he started talking about the roadworks. He asked to look at what remained of Barry's coffee, but Barry had already thrown away his cup as he had finished his coffee as he waited to be interviewed. The coffee cup was fished out of the bin, and Chief Inspector Wayne possibly could see some light green leftover residue in the remaining foam of the discarded cup, but there was very little left in the cup. With the conclusion of the interviews, Chief Inspector Wayne had a suspect in mind if it turned out, as he suspected, that Mr. Brown had ingested poison. Can you figure out the suspect from the clues? It was Suspect 2, Rose Gardner, the retired florist. Chief Inspector Wayne noticed that although she claimed to be deaf, he suspected as a ploy for sympathy and to help remove suspicion from her, she had raised her voice to speak over the loud pedestrian crossing warnings. If she had indeed been deaf, she would not have noticed the noise. Chief Inspector Wayne was also intrigued by her having been a florist. He suspected, but was not sure, that the green substance found in Mr. Brown's cup were dried, poisonous leaves. When confronted, Rose confessed. She had had her retirement planned out, but had found that from what she believed to be mismanagement of her funds with Mr. Brown, that she actually had very little left of her lifetime savings and instead needed to find work to survive. She had known Mr. Brown's schedule as she had been following him, waiting for her opportunity. With St. Patrick's Day, she waited and hoped for an opportunity to slip the crushed rosary pea into his food or drink. Mr. Brown knew of her upset, as she had already confronted him a few times. When he went into the bathroom to escape her, she made use of the opportunity to slip some dried rosary pre, crushed and dyed green, into the coffee cup with his name on it. That concludes this episode of Mini Murder Mysteries, Murder at Java Junction. We hope you enjoyed this bit of fun. We'd love to hear your feedback. 
please let us know how you did in the comments. This has been News of the Times, and I am Sherlock Holes.